specific presentation on growth and profitability trends of Indian organized jewelry players. This presentation will be taken by Mr. K. Shri Kumar, the Vice President and Co-Group Head Corporate Ratings, Ikra Limited. As I introduce Mr. Shri Kumar, uh, let me also tell you a little bit more detail about his profile. Mr. K. Shri Kumar is the Vice President and Co-Group Head of Corporate Ratings at Ikra Limited. With over 15 years at Ikra, Shri Kumar has managed rating and research assignments across diverse sectors including automotive, hospitality, logistics, paper, gems and jewelry and textiles. An associate member of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India, he also holds a master's degree in financial management from Pondicherry University and a bachelor's degree in commerce from the University of Madras. Ladies and gentlemen, wherever you are seated, can I ask you to please give a round of applause to Mr. K. Shri Kumar. My name is Shri Kumar. Uh, I am from uh, Ikra Limited. I represent the corporate uh, ratings team at uh, Ikra Limited. Uh, Ikra Limited is a credit rating agency wherein uh, we evaluate uh, the credit profile of uh, you know, various entities uh, which has exposures towards debt. Uh, more specifically, uh, these are regulatory requirements wherever there are exposures above a prescribed limit. Uh, there is a requirement for a credit rating based on which uh, the investors and the lenders uh, uh, have a pricing. So uh, over years we have been rating multiple sectors, uh, more specifically gold jewelry sector if we have to speak about. Uh, if one looks into the balance sheet of uh, you know, a gold jewelry retail player, uh, over 75 to 80 percentage of uh, the assets is represented by uh, you know, inventory. And obviously this inventory will have to be funded. Funding can happen by way of your creditors, working capital, uh, if you have to talk about some of the schemes that players do have and also to a large extent the promoters money. So given the working capital intensive nature of business, uh, there are requirements for credit rating and over years we have been rating multiple uh, gold jewelry retail entities. And uh, in today's presentations we will be sharing our perspectives in terms of uh, how we have observed the market or the gold jewelry retail market performing what has been uh, the pain points in this industry and what has been the challenges and the opportunities that we have observed. So the, the theme for today is about the revenue and the profitability trends for organized retail players. Uh, since yesterday we have been speaking about the fact that you know across the value chain within the industry there is a prevalence of a large proportion of unorganized trade. Uh, gold jewelry retail industry is of no exception. We do have uh, you know a huge headwind when it comes to the challenges from unorganized trade. But what is interesting to note is that over years we have seen that the share of unorganized trade has come down. It has come down gradually and more specifically uh, in the last uh, few years, you know, in the last you know, five or six odd years, we have seen that the pace of growth of the organized trade has been quite strong. To a large extent, this has been uh, aided by key factors. One, the primary one being the regulations. With the regulatory uh, overview, overview on the sector, we have been observing that much of formalization is actually taking place in the sector and more importantly with effective branding of uh, the gold jewelry retail players uh, coupled with the fact that you know good amount of awareness for retailing uh, players and uh, consumer preference towards the studded gold jewelry and also the fact that uh, good amount of expansions have happened uh, not only in the metros but also in the tier twos and tier three cities we are seeing that there has been an acceleration of the organized trade in the sector Nevertheless, still only a third of the market is still uh, organized. It will take time uh, uh, for the organized trade to catch up to a much faster pace, but directionally there is a you know, positive trend. Speaking about regulations in this sector, it is uh, primary uh, importance for any sector to have a, you know, a kickoff investment or to have a kind of a monitoring. So what we observed in the sector is that you know, there has been a constant evaluation of the sector by the regulators uh, by way of, to ensure that you know uh, the sector has its inherent deficiencies namely the fact that you know th it is a cash driven market to a large extent in multiple geographies and uh, inherent cash nature is a kind of a challenge for the bankers as well and what we have also seen is the fact that uh, the kind of disclosure levels in the space has been uh, pretty substandard in the past but over years with the kind of 
formalization that is happening, we are seeing things improving thanks to the government's uh, you know, efforts in terms of setting up policies and measures. What some of the key measures that I have pointed out over here uh, include, you know, the fact like, you know, the uh, aspects like, you know, mandatory uh, PAN requirements or in terms of the restrictions on unregulated deposits. These have come a long way in ensuring that, you know, the sector uh, is actually looked at seriously by the investors as well. Inclusion of the jewelry sector under uh, PMLA and also the fact that, you know, there has been a periodic revision in the duty rates. This, I wouldn't say that, you know, has accelerated the, for, uh, you know, organized trade here. But the fact that, you know, gold is the second largest commodity, uh, you know, imported after oil and the government has to manage a current account uh, deficit, it becomes all the more important that, you know, the rates are also uh, managed. So over a period of time, last one decade or so, we have been seeing, uh, you know, uh, gradual increase in the duty rates. Uh, to some extent, this has also kind of, uh, you know, uh, resulted in some amount of uh, unofficial imports into the country. But with the recent uh, duty action in the recent budget, one does expect that, you know, uh, the formalization pace actually picks up and it also kind of uh, augurs well for the industry. Um, as a rating agency, what we have seen is that over years, the level of uh, uh, disclosures and the ter in terms of the accountability or in terms of the focus on the MIS internal controls that the retailers have been placing on the sector has actually improved. This is thanks to the oversight of the government. Uh, another key aspect before we touch upon the key theme in terms of the revenues and the margins is the fact that this sector needs a constant funding. Uh, this lending to the sector has been kind of, uh, you know, uh, here and there in the last few years. This diagram largely captures the trend of overall bank credit and how it has, you know, how if one has to compare with the gold jewelry or there is a gems and jewelry sector as a whole. Uh, we would see that, you know, there has been some amount of contraction from a direction standpoint, we would see that uh, some amount of skepticism was uh, witnessed, uh, specifically uh, during 2019, the PNB uh, issues were there. Um, even post that, uh, the way the lenders have approached the sector, uh, it appeared that, you know, they were being extra cautious on the sector. Um, unfortunately, they uh, uh, haven't actually differentiated uh, a CPD, cut and polished diamond versus, uh, you know, gold jewelry player. Since the master classification comes as a gems and jewelry, uh, the bank credit to the sector was affected uh, for a brief period of time. While it has revived, uh, it has improved, uh, but the fact that, you know, it remains selective uh, and they remain continue to have a cautious call on the sector on a relative basis compared to most other sectors. For the sectors, uh, you know, with the more, uh, you know, how do I say, uh, the kind of public issues and also the level of dis uh, disclosures that is happening in the industry, one would expect that the, you know, investment flow into the sector, gold jewelry sector also improves. All right. Uh, from a revenue standpoint, uh, you know, one will have to look at two broad factors that drive uh, the demand over here uh, for a gold jewelry retail player. As a consumer, one looks at uh, a reason to buy factor, like, you know, when ideally I should be kind of buying jewelry and also at what rate. So uh, if I have to talk about the reason to buy, uh, culturally, uh, jewelry is procured, purchased under periodical intervals. There are, uh, you know, auspicious period, there are inauspicious period. But what we now, one will have to kind of see is that how does it coincide with the movement in the gold prices? So what we have observed is that some of the years we have seen that auspicious days were more, but still the demand has not been great because those years the prices would have possibly been on a higher side. But some period where the number of good days were not really great, but still the prices were conducive. So to some extent the demand got uplifted. But imagine a period where the prices are low and the number of good days are there. Obviously it's, it gives a much additional fillip to the kind of growth percentage that we have observed in the uh, last few years. But directionally, we have seen that, you know, the prices have been uh, quite volatile. It went up during the period of COVID and you know, the last couple of years has been again on an elevated uh, regime. Uh, from a volumetric basis, we have seen uh, retail players have had a kind of a stable or a marginal uh, growth or a marginal degrowth. So not much of a volumetric growth we have seen. The growth also would have possibly come from the store expansions and those kind of factors. So this is the uh, some product of what I was talking about. One, the price, the reason what to buy factor, and also the number of good days, all put together has to kind of uh, support the kind of uh, you know demand growth. 
So in periods like say FI21 observes uh, the gold prices were less by 6 percentage. The number of good days were the highest on a, you know, if you have to compare a seven year time frame. And this is a period where we saw a good 17 odd percentage of growth. The subsequent year, obviously it was a pent up demand COVID led uh, factor it wa to a large extent while the value growth was not much, uh, the gold price was high. So obviously when a price is high, obviously we have seen that the value growth has not been uh, substantiated. Uh, FI24 uh, was a period again where the prices have been uh, on a higher trend uh, trajectory and the volume growth were kind of pretty muted. Few jewelers have done de decently well. Uh, a lot of people more specifically uh, located in regions where the unorganized trade is more were significantly affected. We have seen even a double digit volume degrowth for such players. Uh, but in a matured market, we have seen pl players managing to have a a flattish growth or a vol uh, you know, marginal growth in terms of the volumes is concerned. For the current year, uh, we have already seen a, up to around uh, you know 18 to 20 odd percentage increase in the prices on an average. Uh, but the expectation is that following this duty uh, cut uh, with the upcoming uh, you know uh, festive and the wedding season, uh, the hopes is that H2 will be uh, much better than H1. And more importantly, for next year, one will have to watch out. Uh, well, uh, uh, there is a session next on the gold price outlook. We normally look for the inflation related factor, but the expectation is that, you know, there should be a double digit growth in the value terms even next year. So uh, in, in summary, uh, adding all these parts together, we expect uh, the jewelers to kind of have a, a double digit growth in the uh, in value, metric value terms for current financial year at around 13 to 15 odd percentage. Uh, the growth will largely come from price to a large extent because H1, we do expect uh, an impact on uh, you know, sluggish volumes. The second half should catch up from a volume basis and the price should support, uh, the realization should support the growth uh, for a full year basis. Next year, we are assuming uh, you know, uh, 8 to 10 percentage kind of a re revenue growth for the industry. And uh, when it comes to the growth, it is also going to be complemented by the fact that the store expansions are happening. Uh, not all store expansions are incremental revenues that we see here. Uh, it is also kind of getting a replacement or substitution of the existing stores in multiple locations. So while we see a 20, 20 odd percentage of you know additional stores that are getting added in the industry, uh, but you know the impact is not very significant, but still it's a positive. From a jeweler's point of view, retailer's point of view, we do see that the focus is there on being visible, being uh, uh, you know uh, penetratable towards uh, you know tier two, tier three markets, and uh, all these factors are likely to contribute to the revenue growth. Operating margins, uh, uh, while this is a blended number, but the dynamics are very different between a south-based player and a non-south-based player. Uh, the preference for a plain gold is very high in uh, south uh, versus a non-south market. So obviously, uh, a gross margin for a plain gold retailing is you know, uh, in higher single digits, eight to 10 odd percentage. Uh, whereas uh, from a standard standpoint, like, you know, the blended margin goes up to as high as, you know, uh, 16 to 20 odd percentage. So uh, here, while we have evaluated uh, the uh, blended EBITDA margin, uh, the more uh, appropriate measure one has to look at for this sector as a risk analyst, we look at is the kind of interest cover kind of a ratio that is the kind of uh, leverage impact that they carry how efficient are they uh, you know we try to capture that for uh, the current year and next year we do expect some marginal improvement in terms of the EBITDA margins to some extent uh, while uh, uh, to some extent uh, because of this duty uh, correction to the extent of unhedged portion of uh, you know stock we do expect some inventory uh, write downs but nevertheless, we expect this to be caught up in the second half. Uh, some marginal improvement is there, but overall the margins in the industry has always been around uh, range bound. To some extent, it got uplifted at least by a percentage or so post uh, COVID times, you know, because of the price rise. Um, and players have also started focusing on uh, cost measures and efficiency measures. So in summary, uh, these are, this is our outlook from a revenue. Uh, demand drivers is concerned like, you know, the. Uh, Elevated level of gold prices is keeping the you know, volumetric growth a uh, bit subdued, but nevertheless, uh, for a retailer to a large extent, they are able to pass on. And uh, from a value value terms, it's going to be uh, you know uh, around 13 to 15 odd percentage of growth. Margins uh, will continue to be maintained at uh, you know uh, seven odd uh, seven to eight odd percentage. Uh, this is at an industry level average for a 
pure south based player this number would be anywhere between 4 to 6 percentage and uh, you would also see players uh, operating on a pan india basis commanding a much uh, you know higher ebitda margins uh, one other aspect that we look in the industry in terms of the liquidity uh, how uh, comfortable uh, you know uh, from a liquidity standpoint on balance sheet liquid investments as well as the uh, you know availability of uh, you know funds against a sanctioned working capital lines something we look for uh, we also expect the store expansion plans to kind of continue in this industry uh, more specifically in uh, tier 2 and tier 3 markets we expect uh, players to use this opportunity uh, to kind of uh, uh, more specifically about this wedding related uh, times to add on this uh, store expansions uh, this is the last slide when it comes to how we see the segmentation across the industry uh, uh, around 40 odd percentage of the market is currently dominated by south uh, from a product mix standpoint uh, you know roughly uh, studded share is still remaining at around a 20 odd percentage uh, the, the number would be uh, much much lesser in a south based uh, you know market which dominates the market but this is a blended level uh, we spoke about the organized and unorganized mix and finally when it comes to the region wise studded uh, like i said uh, south is uh, much lesser that is the larger part of the market but we expect what we also see is that uh, uh, there has been an increasing preference for light weighted fashion jewelry across the you know country including south so uh, directionally uh, you know uh, we would expect the studded share to kind of go up so uh, this is our call in terms of the revenue and the margin expectations for the organized gold jewelry industry Thank you.